Super Dimension, we are a uh, new lung uh, uh, diagnosis, uh, lung cancer company, and uh, the technology is designed to allow the physician to uh, guide a steerable probe or catheter, over here I'll show you, out to uh, areas of the lung that they could not reach before. So all this uh, equipment goes down through their current bronchoscopy system that they have available to them today. Um, in the tip of this probe, there is a sensor built into it. So this sensor is the, if you think of it in GPS terms, everybody has a GPS in their cars nowadays. Nowadays, this uh, sensor is in the tip of this probe and it can be steered, flexed, and advanced through the patient's airways um, out to uh, areas that they could not reach before. So uh, sticking with the GPS theme, when the tip of the sensor is inserted on into this catheter and down through the uh, working channel of a uh, bronchoscope, these three sensors on the patient's chest act as the satellites in the sky looking down at where the car is or the tip of the sensor and they can pick up the sensor in the patient's airways. This board creates a field above the patient's chest using um, uh, Nintendo Wii-like technology, electromagnetic technology, and when it's being sensed in the field, it can uh, find out where exactly this is. The software during the procedure, the software is uh, essentially allowing the doctor to play a video game while it's snaking that probe out to the lesion. At all times it's telling them when and where to turn like your GPS in your car would and then it informs them uh, that they've arrived at the lesion. So once they're there they can uh, keep the catheter in place. The probe comes out and all their biopsy tools go through the catheter at the uh, into the lesion. So some of the data, some of the statistics out there, you know, lesions in the outer two-thirds of the lung um, with current bronchoscopy equipment and single plane fluoro only have uh, yields of about 14 percent for two CM lesions or less, um, whereas the same size lesion with our technology is very accessible and uh, one of our last studies uh, had an 86 percent diagnostic yield. So 14 percent versus 86 percent is a pretty dramatic change. And, and uh, the fact that you can get to these things without having to cut them out and uh, go from an outside-in approach is uh, much more minimally invasive, safe for the patients. They're, it's done on an uh, outpatient base procedure, so they're just usually given uh, some mild constipation that puts them to sleep, and then they're home that day and they've got a definitive diagnosis of if they have now, lung cancer or not. Now, is this something for people who have symptoms already, or, or you know, there's a lot of CT scans? Tell mm -hmm. us about that. So typically, um, a lot of these patients are uh, accidentally uh, having these lesions found. Um, you go into the hospital nowadays with a bellyache, can't really detect what's going on with you and you know, something's persistent. You go through the CT scanner and a large amount of patients will, will appear with a spot, uh, just a white spot on their lung in the CT scan. So the doctor's then challenged with uh, you know, dealing with whatever, with whatever problem they presented with, but also with what do we do with that spot. So um, the, uh, a lot of times these lesions aren't accessible with traditional bronchoscopy equipment, so they put these patients in a, what they call watchful waiting, where the patient basically says, you know, look, all the uh, methods to test your you know, potential cancer lesion are too invasive for you, so we're just going to have you come back in three months or six months to get a repeat uh, follow-up CT scan to see if the lesion grows or spreads or goes somewhere that you don't want it to go. So they're going crazy for three to six months. They're going crazy thinking they have lung cancer for three to six months. We have one uh, patient down in uh, West Virginia. Actually, uh, they tried a traditional bronchoscopy. The doctor couldn't get to the lesion and then told the patient, go home, we'll follow it up with the CT scan. I'm sorry I couldn't get to it. Well, you know, she was basically sent home to die for the most part. And her uh, daughter found out about super dimension, found one of our doctors down there um, sought them out. They did super dimension on the lady. She actually had two spots. One was uh, just pneumonia, which they cured with antibiotics. The other spot was cancer. At the time they diagnosed the patient as a non-surgical uh, candidate, they dropped a fiducia marker in there. As After they biopsied it, the patient went to uh, radiation therapy, got external beam radiation using that marker to uh, you know, hone in on the lesion as the patient was breathing. And uh, now you know she's, she's cured right now. All the, the lesions shrunk in her lung and you know, if she hadn't found super dimension, she would have just been sitting out there. Wow. Who knows what would have happened to her. So we've got uh, 150 hospitals installed across the country now and 9,000 procedures that have been done. 
uh, around the world, and um, uh, the technology is uh, really becoming mainstream, and we think it's going to be the standard of care moving forward. So that's pretty much it. All right.